Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. Today's video I am going to be taking this patchwork dress that I made last year, could even have been the year before. I hardly ever wear it. I made it out of loads of fabrics that I stitched together to make patchwork fabric that I made into this dress. I love it to bits but I hardly wear it and I think the reason why I hardly wear it is because I didn't make enough fabric to make it long enough so it's a length that is not my kind of length it's neither here nor there it's not smock length and it's not maxi length I'm not and that's the lengths I like but I am going to take it apart and I'm going to upcycle it and I'm going to make it into something that's more wearable and get more use of it and that's what I'm going to do today so I'm going to take it apart see how much I've got to play with and I'm going to try and hopefully, fingers crossed, make myself a new skirt with it. So obviously supervisors here. So yeah, so I made myself a skirt I want to make, got an idea in my head, as I'd like to replicate this pink skirt, and I'll pop the picture up, this pink corduroy skirt I made with a yoke detail and a flared, flared bottom. I made it for my Patreons, so if you want to join me, the link's in the box below. So that was my Patreon video, and absolutely love it. I love the length, I love the flare detail, I love the yoke detail, I love that skirt. So I thought I would recreate it using this patchwork fabric. So I thought, I would take this dress apart and try and use the skirt part. Obviously, there's not going to be enough to take apart on the bodice, so I'm just going to leave the bodice because I might be able to do something with the bodice and the sleeves for something else. So I'm going to take the skirt up off the dress and I'm going to have to repair it because it's dropping to bits with... I obviously didn't sew the fabric well enough together when I made the patchwork fabric. So I need to repair parts of it. There isn't going to be enough to do a full-on flare skirt in this, but that's not what I was going to do anyway. I was going to add some denim to it. So the idea is to have the yoke part in the denim. I think denim will go lovely with it. Then I would like to have the whole flare part in the patchwork. There's not going to be enough. There's no way going to be enough. So what I'm going to probably end up doing is use whatever I can for the flare part and it's going to be a shorter flare section of patchwork and the remaining part that won't fit on will then be the bottom part in denim. So it's going to be another kind of patchwork garment but with denim and then I'll be able to use this and I know I'm going to wear, I know I will wear it because I'll make it the length that I like which is like the length of the, the, de the Sadie skirt that I've got on now. comes right down to my boots. Love this length for the autumn, well I love this length, not just the autumn winter and I'll have enough if I add the denim to it. So it's gonna be another kind of patchwork, but it's gonna be a skirt that I'll be able to wear. And with all these colors in it, I'll be able to mix and match with the denim, be able to wear all my little knitted vests and my blouses. And I just think it'll be nice. And also, I think it's gonna be a fun project for me to do. So I'll show you the pattern pieces that I've got that I made for the skirt. And I will obviously gonna to have to trim my pattern pieces down and you should be able to see if Jordi gets out of the way. These are my original pieces I did for my flare skirt, the back and the front. But there's absolutely no way, as I said, it's gonna fit on here. So, thank you Jordi, I'm gonna have to button my pattern piece for whatever fits on the fabric that I've got once I've took it apart I'll see how much I've got and then whatever I don't have enough of like I said I will add the denim to the bottom so it's going to be like denim patchwork denim it might look absolutely horrible but I'm just going to use the fabric it's sat in my wardrobe not getting worn so it's not like it's going to be the end of the world and I think I will like it but we shall see at the end of the video. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take the skirt off the bodice first, give it a nice press, see where it needs repairing, repair the sections, and then put it on this pattern piece, see what fits, get my denim out. I've got some lovely denim on the roll there. And uh, yeah, so let's do some sewing. 
So, first things first, let's take the skirt. I mean, look at the state of it. <laughs> oh my lord, it's literally fray central as well. I've obviously missed some seams that I didn't overlock and it's frayed with me washing it. Oh my lord, yep, totally fray central. But anyway, that's, that's okay because we're going to repair it and I'm going to take the pockets out. I don't need the pockets in, take the pockets out. So, stitch ripper first and we'll take it apart. Right, so there is the top part, which I'm going to leave. I might be able to make a little peplum top kind of thing. You know, something like what I've got on, maybe, possibly, I don't know. I'll pop it back on here, and we know it's, I know it's safe. And then I can think about what I'm going to do with that another day. And then we'll see how much fabric I've got. I know I'm not going to have, it seems a lot, but it's not. But I'll show you my denim that I've got as well. It's a lovely weight denim. I mean, how bad is that? And I clearly didn't overlock that seam. I don't know what I did there. I've got quite a few that I've missed. So, don't know what happened there. I've completely missed a couple of rows of overlocking and that's why it's frayed and that's why it's fallen apart. So I have no idea what happened there. <clears throat> right, so I'll just cut those pockets off. Just roughly cut them off because I won't be using them. And I think a quick press and then I can see where the holy bits are and then we'll mend the holes and then we'll see what we've got left to fit. So iron first. Right, so I found all the parts that need repairing so I'm gonna repair them first and I'll get my denim out and I'll show you the denim and then we'll see what we can get on. Go from there. So to the machine, turn the machine on. Okay, that's not gonna work because I can't get in to the seat, like the full piece of the seam because it's like overlocked on the other piece so I can't get in so yeah, it's not going to work and if I do get right in, it's going to puck out the other piece. So if I'm going to do this properly, I'm going to have to unpick the rows. Because they're stitched in like rows, I patched them in like rows and then I stitched the rows together. But obviously when I patched them in, in patches that way, I forgot to overlock some of them. So in order for me to stitch these seams that are coming apart, to and get at them I need to separate the rows then I can overlock all the pieces that I've missed and mend all the pieces then I can stitch the rows back together so yeah if you're going to do a job you may as well do it right so that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to probably make a cup of coffee and sit and unpick all the rows so they'll be obviously apart and then mend mend said you can see, well, you can actually see what I've done. Clearly had a moment when I was doing this because I've obviously overlocked the rows going down, but I haven't overlocked anything when I put them together in the, the you know, the individual rows. Don't know what I was thinking there. Completely missed that off. And if I don't do it now, it's, it's all going to obviously probably drop apart in time. So that's what I'm going to do. So stitch ripper, 
cup of coffee and I'll see you back when I've got them all taken apart. Okay, so that's all done. I am literally covered in fluff. Fluff central. Didn't take too long, had a cup of coffee, about half an hour, and in the end I just trimmed the overlock bit off because it was taking forever to try and unpick the overlock. So that's all done. So they're in, in strips. I've lost the order that they were in, but I'll, I'll soon sort that out. So they're in strips. So now before I put them back together in strips, I'm going to overlock and make sure every seam is put together nice and securely this time and then overlock and then once all they're, they're done that way then I can sew them together and then sew them together that way and then overlock them that way and then hopefully the fabric pieces will be a lot more secure for future wearing then we'll see how much I've got to do said skirt This has taken longer than anticipated and I've had to use a one centimetre seam allowance because some of the edges were that frayed I couldn't go in any less so we'll be lucky if I get a handkerchief made out of all this by the time I've finished let alone a skirt. This is section one and I've still got another six strips to do for section two and then overlock so yeah look it's just literally dropping, dropping to pieces but I may not even get a skirt. We shall see. Back to it. Right, so all 12 pieces stitched, overlocked that way. So now what I've got to do, if you can see, I have now got to put them all back together into one piece of fabric trying not to repeat anything and I think that looks okay nothing's repeating anywhere nothing's next to each other so now I've just got to sew them back together this way all the way along and then overlock and then do exactly the same for that set of six over there and then I'll be back to the beginning to then start on the skirt so I am absolutely covered in bits. The house is covered in bits. It's fluff central. I'll be picking up fluff and bits forever. But you know, if you're gonna do a job, you may as well do it right. I should have done this right at the beginning when I made the dress and wouldn't be doing it now, would I? So there we go. So that's what I'm gonna do next. Put all of these pieces together. So, me and my 10 minute jobs, it's now pitch black outside, it is 10 to 5 and I started this at approximately quarter to 12, so that's how long this has took, my back is breaking. The both panels are now re-stitched, re-overlocked, now they are not perfect, some of them are not perfectly square because some of them are frayed so much I had to trim off and some of the point, you know, the joins are not spot on, but it, it's it's not too bad that's as much as I've got so that's how much I've got for one piece and I've got the exact same for the second piece and I've got to somehow fit some part of this skirt on to each of these pieces and that's like a front and a back
so that's as much as a patchwork skirt I'm going to get and then I'm going to have the yoke in uh, obviously the yoke attached and then the denim below who knows what this is going to turn out like so now I'm just going to do the same for the front piece and the front and the back are almost identical. Front and back, top, front and back, bottom. So they're going to be for the denim. And the yoke's going to be for the denim. So put them to one side and we'll try and cut out this way on I look quite nice that way because uh, that's the only way I'm going to get them on so we'll cut it out this way on So I just need to add a seam allowance on there, one centimetre, because obviously I've cut it apart. And I haven't added to the pattern, so I'll have to make sure I, I draw it on the fabric. Next up, denim. I've got absolutely tons of denim. It's a nice medium weight denim, so I think it'll look really nice against the patchwork. Right, so I mustn't forget to add my seam allowance there because I cut it apart. So obviously if you're going to stitch things back together, you've got to put your seam allowance. So I'm just going to draw it on the fabric. So, and then I've got my yokes. So one, the, one is going to be cut to the centre back yoke and then we've got the centre front which will be on the fold so let's just see what I can get out of this little scrap here first
Yay, her last sewing. I like it actually. Um, I am pleasantly surprised, pleasantly surprised because I thought it was just going to go pear-shaped really to be honest because I didn't think I'd be able to salvage this fabric but yeah so that's the front done overlocked yoke onto the middle bit, middle bit onto the bottom bit all overlocked obviously I'm going to press my seams I'll do the back, sew the sides, obviously overlock, press all my seams so on to the back Okay, and I'm just going to pin the yokes while I'm here and then I'm not up and down at the machine. Right, so then overlock them and then we'll press the seams and then I'll stitch the side seams together. Okay, I clip my curves. So now I'm going to put the front to the back, the side seams. So I'll just make sure I've got my, so that is my zip. I put the pins, so I know that's the centre back. I'll just line up my side seams and my, make sure my seams line up as well. Yeah, so I'm going to overlock the back seams first, then I'll sew the back, centre back together up to the notch for the zip, put the zip in, put the waistband on, hem it, and then it'll be done. So considering I thought it was only going to be a few hours, we're now at 20 to 7 at night, so I've been going since well, nearly seven hours roughly, on and off. Uh, yeah, me and my 10 minute jobs. But we're nearly done, we're nearly done. So I'll just keep going. Okay, I don't know whether you can see, I've just quickly tried it on. 
zips in, waistbands on. I've still got my boots on. I wish I'd put a little bit extra length on the length because I haven't done the hem yet. So I'm going to have to do a minuscule hem because I don't want, really want to lose any of the length. I will show you. You can just see there. That's the length I would have liked it to be with, with it being hemmed. So I'll have to make a note for next time. I added three centimetres onto that pattern. So I really need to add maybe five centimetres onto the end of that pattern for like a two to three centimetres plus a two centimetre hem. Uh, but yeah, I think it's turned out really well. Uh, it needs a good press. I'm not sure about the top stitching yet. I'm not sure whether just to leave it as it is or I might do, I don't know. I don't want it to be overly fussy. What with this patchwork going on in the middle. I forgot, I also forgot to put some interfacing on again down the zip, um, what with it going through denim and a bit of the patchwork so I should have put you know two strips of reinforcement there that I didn't, but naughty me. Yeah I think this turned out really well. So obviously it's pitch black, it's now half past seven, I'm done apart from the hem. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, it wasn't meant to be this long, it was me and my 10 minutes, you know me, uh, turned out to be a bit of a marathon, but you know, it was worth it. I've had a lovely day sewing, I've had a lovely day. I'm absolutely covered in bits. Oh, for the waistband, if you want to know, I just used the Sadie skirt waistband, which is the Sadie skirt that I had on the denim one there. Uh, I'll pop the link to the pattern for that in the e box below. Also, this is the Wilma skirt. It's not out as a pattern yet. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of today's video. Did you enjoy watching me making from that? to this. So it's finished. Totally love the swirl factor. So quick recap. It's all hemmed, all pressed, zips all in, waistbands done, everything. Totally love it. It's worked out far better than I hoped for yesterday in my head. I thought it was going to be amazing, but yesterday when I was working on all those squares and unpicking them and re-sewing them and it was just fray central, there was bits of fluff everywhere, even the cats were covered in bits of fluff, I just thought this is not going to work, it's just going to disintegrate, it's not going to work. Anyway, I persevered, as you saw, seven hours of perseverance, but if a job's worth doing, it's worth doing well, it's what I always say. So there's two things I probably should have done to make it even better. Added some interfacing down where the zip goes, just for extra reinforcement, because obviously the zip goes through part denim, part, part of the patchwork, so obviously the patchwork is a lighter fabric, and obviously it's much more fragile, because it's all stitched together kind of fabric. So I should have really put two strips of medium weight interfacing down there and I didn't, completely forgot. And also, I probably should have flat lined this section here, maybe just use a little bit of my very fine calico lining fabric that I use for my twirls. I maybe should have just um, flat lined this section as well, just to give it a little bit more weight. Uh, but that's just me, that's just me being picky. So it was a long day yesterday, worth it though, and it was just a lovely day sewing for me anyway, and I really enjoyed the process. I'm glad I persevered. I totally love the result. Obviously, this is gonna be the Wilma skirt, and it has the total swish factor. All I wanna do now is swish around the house and twirl. So hope you've enjoyed today's video, hope you liked it, don't forget to hit that like if you did like it, subscribe if you want to subscribe, you know all the things, I'll pop everything in the box below, all the links for my sewing patterns, and if you want to join me on Patreon, then the link will be in the box below too. But that's it for today's video, thanks so much for, you, for joining me and supporting me on my sewing journey, totally love everything about what I'm doing, and uh, I'll see you on my next video, bye for now.